Okay, here's something I honestly thought we would never do on Fox 6 News at 10. We're going to spend a little time talking about Latin. No, whoa, 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 please don't turn away. Put down the remote <laughs> because I promise you the man talking about Latin in the story is very much alive. And so is the language he loves so much. Mike Lowe with a real character you'll meet only on Fox 6. Every day, like clockwork, it's uh, almost 10 to 1. He waits for his ride. I hear it. There he is. Bang, there he is. And every day, he's excited about where he's going. But this is all, it's all adventure. It's all adventure. The first thing you'll notice about Father Reginald Foster is what's missing. There's no frock, no black suit, and no concern for the trappings of the priesthood. My Lord delivers, look at me. <laughs> trappings? <laughs> no, no, I don't even have a collar. Instead, he wears a janitor's uniform. He's not a janitor, but he's very much in maintenance. Essentials, I say, even in class essentials. What Father Foster is trying to resuscitate. This is too good. Is something that most people consider dead. Et ad experienda dona que novo seculo sunt abenda perducis. Latin. Divinitas. As in heaven's sakes, this is a, a living thing. Non habet. Potestatem. What these students may not realize is that taking Latin with Father Foster is like learning painting from Picasso or music from Mozart. It's Latin. Beneath the outfit of a working man is the soul of a working man. My father was a plumber and uh, the whole family are plumbers. And the mind of a scholar. Foster spurned the family business for a higher calling, joining the priesthood. He soon discovered he excelled at one of the tools of the trade. Father Foster spoke Latin like a Roman emperor. And that talent was noticed and needed at the Vatican, where Latin remains the official language. After my first year, the Pope's Latin just fell sick. One of my teachers was working in the Vatican, and he said, I think I know the man you're looking for. Foster was in the middle of a Latin lesson when his tutor stormed in and offered him the opportunity of a lifetime. And then he came in the classroom, he said, you want to be the Pope's Latinist? And I said, sure, this may, certainly. For the next 40 years, every official document that came from the Vatican was either written by his hand or approved with his eyes. The funeral mass of Pope John Paul II. The mass heralding the ascension of Pope Benedict. And the document certifying Jerome Listecki as Milwaukee's Archbishop were all written by Father Foster. But a year ago, he left Rome and returned to Milwaukee Alter Terrarum Orbis to deal with a series of health problems. Now he's recovering and living near family. It was very providential, though, very, very providential. The talent that made him so valuable to four popes over 40 years could have him teaching at any university for a nice stipend. Father Foster gives it away, as they say in Latin, pro bono. Free, completely free, which is amazing. You know, you're sitting with the probably greatest Latinist in the world right now and free in Milwaukee. He won't answer to Father Foster, so the students okay. call him Reggie. He's also been called a renegade, a maverick, and an ecclesiastical oddball. Oh, you see what turned me on? He's a member of the clergy unafraid to criticize Catholic doctrine. Half of this stuff I think is human creation and human nonsense, that's all. And it is. His anti-establishment streak hasn't gone over well with his superiors in Rome. And they said, Foster, Foster. For years, the Vatican tried to get him to toe the line. They did for a while, and then they gave up. There was never any serious discipline because, frankly, they couldn't afford to lose him. While in Rome, Foster developed an unorthodox teaching style. Those are those famous sheets. He uses a series of sheets of paper that contain excerpts from poets, politicians, and popes. Ah, look at how they're talking. Rather than using a rote textbook. So his lessons spring to life with the words of the ancients, whose spirits still seem to flutter in his classroom. We might have Augustine or Bernard or Vatican II or some encyclical or back to Cicero, Virgil, Horace, Paul. They said, look at how they talked. Foster is an affectionate but strict teacher. Read, David. Quo Caesar, 
Cesar. He says Latin demands discipline and dedication. He makes all of his students sign a tough contract. So I tell the students, you can take off your shoes or clothes or bring beer or wine in class. I don't care. If you make one stupid mistake, you're out. And his students in Milwaukee are smitten. I suggest you have a toast um, oh, to yeah. our beloved teacher. And we're really grateful for your life and your teaching us and for your class. Givali. <laughs> so beloved is Father Foster that his class took him out for wine, cake, and song on his 71st birthday. Felix TV Esto Reginalde. Hic, hic Natalis TV. Multos anos multoque plures. Ooh. Ooh, nice. <laughs> oh, you can hear it. Yeah. You know, Latin is always nice. Most nights after teaching, he returns home and opens a book. I haven't been bored for 10 seconds in 57 years. And I have to, if I feel a little bored, pull out another author, a poet, or history, Caesar, ah! He wants Latin to survive, yet he laments the long, slow death of the language, and it begs the question. If Latin is dead, which is to say it's not really spoken anywhere anymore, then why is it still important? Why is it still relevant? Relevant? Because it's, it's about three quarters of our Western civilization, for one, and all of our, our thoughts and ideas, prayers, and all this other stuff has come through Latin. How do you save Latin? By teaching it well, because you have to be turned on by Latin. If you teach music well, you'll be converted to Haydn and Mozart. You'll fall in love with the thing if it's presented well. And like clockwork, he'll teach it six days a week. A priest with a passion for language that's timeless. Hmm. And anyone interested in taking Father Foster's class, and it is open to anyone who's willing to commit the time and willing to learn, should mail a short note of interest to Reginald Foster at 3553 South 41st Street. He'll send you one of those contracts, and you can take the class for free right here in Milwaukee. The letter can be in English, right? You can write okay. the letter in English, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, one stupid mistake in your audio said, boy, that's a little daunting. It's like, you know, oh. he, he comes off as strict, but he's actually very affectionate yes. in the classroom. And he, yeah. I, I didn't see him throw anybody out, and there were plenty of mistakes. <laughs> Last question, do you think he'll ever go back to Rome? You know, he said that was his original intent when he came back to Milwaukee with uh, a broken leg, and then he had to have heart surgery, and he thought maybe someday he would get back and work again with the Pope. But he said now that he's been in Milwaukee and he's teaching this class to Americans, he's been completely rejuvenated, and he thinks he'll spend the rest of his life here. Wow. Right. Usually we would say thanks, Mike, but in honor of your story, I'll go back to my high school Latin. Uh, Gratius ago tibi, I think. Bene. I think I right. Was that right? <laughs> what he said. 